Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing basal ganglia. The main function of basal ganglia is to plan the movement, okay, to plan the motor movement and make the movement possible. So before initiating or before producing any kind of movement, the cortex first consults basal ganglia and that is the main function of basal ganglia. So let's understand few terms. See, putamen and globus pallidus together forms lentiform nucleus and putamen and caudate nucleus together both of them form striatum. Now caudate nucleus does not take part in any kind of motor activity. That's why we will not discuss, discuss that in detail. Now, uh, see the main components of basal ganglia are uh, thalamus, lentiform nucleus which is formed by putamen and globus pallidus. Then we have subthalamic nucleus and we have substantia nigra. Now in different kind of books you will find different kind of classification but these are the main things that form the basal ganglia. Now there are two pathways in the basal ganglia. The first one is direct and it is stimulatory pathway. It increases the movement okay and the next one is indirect pathway which is inhibitory. It inhibits the movement and uh, a proper coordination between both of them results in a proper movement. Now all the excitatory neurons in basal ganglia they secrete glutamate and all the inhibitory neurons they secrete GABA. Now whenever I say in lecture that any of the neuron is less inhibited then understand that it is stimulated okay and if any of the neuron is less stimulated then it means that it is inhibited so just don't get confused in these terms I'll explain why is it so in detail later or else I'll write in the description box about this now this is the basic circuit of basal ganglia now this shorter pathway this first one is green okay all the neurons that are shown in the green they are excitatory and all the neurons that are shown in the red they are inhibitory now this shorter circuit this one first one going from cortex to putamen from putamen to globus pallidus internus and from globus pallidus internus to thalamus and from there to again to cortex this shorter pathway this is direct pathway and the one that is longer it is indirect pathway see the longer the indirect pathway it goes from motor cor cortex to putamen from putamen to globus pallidus externus from global globus pallidus externus to subthalamic nucleus from subthalamic nucleus to globus pallidus internus and from globus pallidus internus to thalamus and then again to cortex so in the uh, indirect pathway you, we have two extra component globus pallidus externus and subthalamic nucleus which are not present in the direct pathway now to make things little bit simpler remember one thing see all the fibers or all the neurons that are coming out of lentiform nucleus will always release GABA see all all the neurons that are releasing GABA they are coming out of lentiform nucleus see this one is coming out from putamen both of them this this one is coming out from globus pallidus externus and this one is coming out from globus pallidus internus rest of all the neurons they are excitatory okay so now let's understand how this circuit works see whenever the motor first neuron of the motor cortex it fires it releases glutamate okay now when it releases glutamate here okay, let me zoom in. whenever it releases glutamate here this glutamate will stimulate this second nerve okay and when this second nerve is stimulated it will release more GABA it will release more GABA and when more GABA is released here it will cause inhibition of the third neuron see when more GABA is released this neuron will be inhibited and when this neuron will be inhibited it will secrete less GABA okay and when it will secrete less GABA the inhibition on the final neuron will be reduced okay and it will increase the glutamate release okay and when the glutamate release increases the movement will happen so that's why see the end result is there is increase in glutamate result uh, sorry glutamate release that's why this direct pathway is stimulatory now let's understand the indirect pathway see whenever see the first neuron it releases glutamate okay and it works on this neuron of the indirect pathway when more glutamate is released this second neuron will be 
stimulated and when it will be stimulated it will release more GABA see whenever any of the neuron is stimulated it will its neurotransmitter release will be increased and when any of the neuron is inhibited its neurotransmitter release will be decreased so now this neuron will secrete more GABA okay so this GABA will work on the third neuron and the third neuron will be inhibited now as it is inhibited it will release less GABA okay now it is releasing less GABA so this neuron will have less inhibition or we can say it will be stimulated now as it is stimulated there will be more glutamate release and when more glutamate is released this this neuron will be stimulated okay and when it is stimulated it will release more GABA now this GABA will work on the final neuron okay and as more GABA is released this final neuron will be inhibited okay so this neuron will decrease glutamate release and as it decreases the glutamate release the movement will be inhibited that's why the direct pathway it increases the movement and indirect pathway it decreases the movement now for the fine tuning of this pathway for proper regulation and also for the initiation of the movement we have substantia nigra now see how what's the main purpose of substan substantia nigra its main function is to initiate movement initiate movement and make the movement possible okay so the main thing is to initiate movement now if it wants to initiate the movement it should stimulate the direct pathway okay because that's that's the pathway that is causing the movement and it should inhibit the indirect pathway because we we want the movement to happen that's why we should inhibit the in inhibitory pathway or indirect pathway so that's exactly what substantia nigra will do see it will release dopamine at both the points at the direct pathway as well as at the indirect pathway okay but at direct pathway the receptor for dopamine will be D1 which are excitatory or stimulatory and at, uh, at the inhibitory pathway the dopaminergic receptor will be D2 which are inhibitory now due to the effect of this dopamine the stimulatory pathway or the direct pathway will be stimulated and the indirect pathway will be inhibited because here we have D2 receptor which are inhibitory rest of the all things remain same okay and under effect of dopamine the movement will occur means the starting of the movement will occur uh, and the main thing to remember here is that the dopamine will stimulate the stimulatory pathway and it will inhibit the inhibitory pathway both of which sorry sorry for the disturbance see the main function of substantia nigra is to stimulate the direct pathway and inhibit the indirect pathway so this both of these action action will result in increase in movement now there are some fibers within the putamen okay which releases acetylcholine sorry it's becoming messy see there are there are two fibers in the within the putamen which releases acetylcholine at the same place where substantia nigra is releasing dopamine and these fibers from putamen will have exactly opposite effect of dopamine so see substantia nigra is releasing dopamine okay and the fibers from putamen they are releasing acetylcholine okay now both of them have exactly opposite function dopamine will increase the movement while acetylcholine will decrease the movement so that is the reason that in patients with parkinson disease either we give dopamine to make the movement possible or we give anticholinergic so that again movement can occur so that was all about the basal ganglia